Now I've shown you how to do red glow on the Necrons before, and that's fine and well if you've got an airbrush. But what if you don't? So, first of all, to save wasting a lot of your time, I'm going to start this video from the step after we've done all the metals, armour and coated the gun black. I'm just going to focus literally just on the glow effect here. If you do want to see how those steps, how I got to this point, it's all explained in my previous Red Necron Glow video, so I'll check that one out if you want to know that part. However, on this video, over what I did on the last Necron video, I'm going to put a little guide on the side here just so you can see exactly what I'm doing at each step. And hopefully that'll just make things a little clearer as we go along. Now onto this video. We're gonna need a bit of a small detail dry brush here and we're actually gonna make our own. So you can see here, I've got a pretty knackered old brush that I've actually been using for basing and that's just ruined the bristles. So I'm sitting just gonna cut down all those bristles on the end, give myself a real short stumpy dry brush. And then as I've shown you before, just simply put a little bit of paint into those bristles but because we're using such a short brush, it's gonna take quite a lot of work to get the paint back out of these. So just really take your time to make sure the paint is just how we want it. And to be honest, I can't see a thing using white on this white kitchen roll, so I'm just gonna do a little test onto my glove here just to really check the paint is just how I want it before putting it on the model. Now as we don't have the spray pattern of the airbrush to help us this time, we're gonna to have to artificially control which direction the light is spreading. So to do this on the orbs and on the gun, you just want to start from the centre of each orb and just fan the brush outwards in all directions away from that centre. That's really going to give you like a sunburst of light outwards from the core. And you're going to need to do the same for every orb. Just really spread that light quite far and catch all of those other parts of the gun that are just going to be sitting in the path of the light. Now I'm going to admit, it's going to be looking pretty messy at this stage and you're probably going to be thinking to yourself you're just ruining everything by following along. But just remember, this is the very base of our glow here, so it's going to be a really soft, wide pattern and give you a really nice blend from the darks into the light source. And it's going to look especially messy on the face, just because as such a small detailed area, it doesn't take much paint at all to look too much. I'm not worried, and you shouldn't be either. And when you are done, you should be left with something that looks pretty similar to this. I mean, yeah, it's fairly grainy and looks pretty overkill, but it's all going to be controlled on future steps. Now when I say these are thin, they're really thin. It's important when you're building the layers on these, that you just gently build the layers in slowly, slowly, because if it's too thick anywhere, it's going to act like a wash and just run right into all those recesses and it'll pull in weird ways that you really don't want. So just layer it on in the thinnest layers possible, letting each one dry in between, just to really build up those layers of colours. It'll look like you're doing nothing at the start, but Towards the end, you'll get the hang of it. So with gaming red on the brush, not watered down at all. You can see here just how thin I mean by this. It hardly covers over that black at all. But yeah, with the ink, just brush it on all over those areas where you've dry brushed the white. Now you want to make sure it gets into all of the recesses and just tints everything with a warm red glow. It might take you a couple layers to really get the colour right, but as long as you've got no white patches left over at the end, then you're doing the right thing and it's going to be coming out well. And same here on the eyes, just make sure you get it deep into those eye sockets and all around the ridges on the cheeks and on the eyebrow areas. Just make sure you tint all those white areas that rich red. And I know what you're thinking, this looks way too extreme. But all we're getting is the richness of the colour. We're not too worried about where this is touching and what areas are getting glow. Just focus on that red for now until it's time to clean up. So just like as I've done on the airbrush tutorial, on both methods, this next step is simply just to really brighten those light sources where that light is coming from. So all we're doing is grabbing any white you'd like, it can be white paint or even white ink if you'd rather, and just lightly whiten all those orbs in the gun and then brighten up his eyes as well. And now the key to this effect. Green stuff weld fluorescent red. Now this, this relies heavily on what's painted underneath it. Hence why we brighten those light sources with white first, just to really boost that glow in the areas we want it to. So the first step we do with this paint is to once again, go in, in the same direction as we did earlier, just dry brush those edges around those orbs, spreading the light outwards, but you don't want to go too far this time. Once that's all done, we're actually going to 
boost the glow around the perimeter of the orbs again, but by brush this time. Just paint a nice layer over the top of each orb, and then another layer around the edge of all the light sources within the gun, just to really intensify that glow. And then this next step is kind of a repeat of the last one, just a lot neater and a lot more focused towards the core. So again, with the same white as we used to whiten the orbs, just go around all those edges again, and this will just act as light really being reflected off the edges of the opening, just shining back in towards the light source. As before, but for the last time now, just add a layer of fluorescent red again, all over that white you've just put down. And then your very last step on this glow is just to simply add a small white dot in the center of each light source. That's completed the OSL glow, all without an airbrush. But although it's all complete, we was pretty sloppy with our first layer with the white dry brush, right? Time to go cleaning. So to clean up the armor panels, we're first of all gonna grab the cryptic armor shade we used to tint these areas that metallic brown. And we're just gonna apply a nice layer over each area where we feel the glow is a little bit too intense, or places where the light shouldn't really be able to reach, such as this forehead here and under the cheeks. Just use this step to really shape and sharpen all those glows to look really convincing. And then we're gonna do similar on the gun as well. But for this, we're gonna use whatever black you use to paint the gun. And all you wanna do is just darken all those areas again, but the ones at the opposite end of where the light source from the gun would actually be able to reach. And now it's all neat and tidy. All that's left to do is the base. And these three guys spinning here, two of them I've actually done with the airbrush. And the third one is the one used in this tutorial. Any guesses which is which? Well, the middle guy is actually the one you've been watching for the past 15 minutes, but surely you can agree that effect is just as convincing with an airbrush or just by hand with a regular brush. Now, I really hope this video has been helpful to all those people who have been messaging me asking me how to do this effect airbrush free. And if it was, I'd appreciate if you stuck around to watch the rest of the videos I create. Or, you know, just shoot me a message and say hi on Reddit or anything like that. Thanks for watching. My name's been Paul and hopefully I'll catch you on the next one.